must christians marry in church okay now this is quite an interesting topic okay and i saw this video that was done by pastor kinsley okonkwo okay which i actually feel is quite an interesting topic i should bring up here now i want to know what your thoughts are and your opinion concerning some of these things as we discuss about it so make sure to leave your comments on the comment section okay now i listened to that video by pastor kinsley very well and i discovered something there are some things which he said in that video which i want to consider as more of his own personal opinion than having it rooted in the bible okay pastor kinsley quite all right in attempt to answer this question he started off by giving a proper explanation that look the Bible is actually silent on how marriages should be conducted. And uh, what that means is that whenever God is silent on issues like this is in the scripture, what that means is that God wants us to take our own initiative so long as our initiatives are not anti-scriptural. All right. So this is true to some extent. However, I think if we are very careful, we can actually see some guidelines on how marriages we are actually conducted in the scripture Today i'm answering the question must a christian marry in church people ask me all the time is it um is a church wedding the only wedding we can do or must we even do a church wedding must a christian do a church wedding or must i do a church wedding okay uh must i do a church wedding the answer is no you don't um, have to do a church wedding but it'd be good to do one all right um the way wedding works is that um there's no way in scripture where they said you must wed in a church interestingly um throughout the bible um we didn't even see any um instance where people wedded in a church interestingly um there's something when you see god silent on certain things it's because he wants to give us some liberty to decide i know human beings like to be fully yielded to god but they don't realize that part of the ways you are fully yielded to god is by actually using the free will he gave you. Common ways people get married. Um, three common ways. Um, the first one is culturally. So this is basically whatever your family decides. Whatever your tradition or culture is. God is not against culture and tradition. It's only when those culture and tradition are contradictory to scripture, then it becomes a problem. All right, but ordinarily, God actually, the Bible actually says in Romans that give custom to whom custom is due. So God actually believes in customs. God actually believes in tradition. All right? It's only when those tradition is trying to say, oh, you need to sacrifice to another God, or you need to do something, you need to marry ten wives, or you need to against your wife before you marry. When it's something that's going to break, you know, scriptural godly principle, then God is against it. But ordinarily, tradition, um, you know, wearing your native attire, dancing, or whatever, all those things, God is okay with it. So that's traditional marriage. It is as valid as any other marriage. In the eyes of God, it's valid. In fact, if two families come together and they are both agree on terms and do this ceremony and just say, you're this nice husband, it's marriage. In the eyes of God, it's okay. He has accepted it. God is not against that. All right? That's one. Second one we do is legal or court marriage. You know, um, I don't know whether they call it civil in some other places, but you know, it's the official legal one. Now, people usually do this one because the court sometimes can't recognize the traditional one because the traditional one is so informal it's so informal it's difficult to you know recognize it legally so many places they are required to do some civil stuff some court stuff that will be registered with the government registered with the law so that's why you need it all right however it's unsettling for me to get to hear pastor kinsley actually okay court marriage for christians on the grounds that these people are actually considered authority so because they are considered authority we can actually a christian can actually just go ahead with any of these either traditional marriage or court marriage and they are actually married before god right um and the third one is the church which what do i discuss on side with church wedding you don't have to do a church wedding however if you are a christian and you understand the place of honoring god do you see this all right you now begin to grow you understand hey i want god to be a part of it i want other brethren other christians to stand with me as i go on this journey you know i i i, I want to honor god with what i'm doing then you can do a church wedding you see it's not it's not it's not as if if you don't do a church wedding you're not married you are married because i see people that tell me i, I want to leave this man i'm with i say are you not married I say yeah we're just traditionally and hunter i say no you're married it's a i, I, I just want to leave this man so why uh, we just did a court wedding you are married it's not until you come to church before his marriage okay you are married even if it's traditional, it's marriage. When, when, when you're a Christian now, you have understanding. You understand that this marriage is not, I'm not just making a pledge 
to a human being. I'm not making a vow to just a human being. Those of you that have watched my video on um, covenant and contract, you understand this. Marriage is a covenant, not just between two people, interestingly, but between three people. Because it, you're co making a covenant to your husband or your wife, but you're also making a covenant with God. So this is why church is good. When you have this understanding, and this doesn't mean you can't do it outside of church. You can do it anywhere. You can do the same. But I'm just saying, a church makes it kind of official for you. All right? You, you are conscious of the fact that this union is not just between me and this man. It's between me and God. All right? You are... You are conscious of the fact that God is represented in this union. And both of you are submitted and yielded to God. So that's why church is good. And if you can't have it inside the church, you can still get um, spiritual authority. You see, God has constituted spiritual authority. I see people these days that say, oh, we don't need a pastor. That, that's not true. God believes in constituted authority. There are different constituted authorities that God has. In the traditional marriage, the parents or parents' representative are the constituted authority. You see God say, give, give honor to whom honor is due. Give custom to whom custom is due. Give tribute to whom tribute is due. God believes in constituted authority. In fact, God says, uh, okay, that's talking about custom. So your, your parents are the constituted authority. Now, when it comes to um, civil or legal, the law of the land is the constituted authority. You know, um, having those con spiritual constituted authority being present in your life, and also speaking over you and releasing you into this journey of marriage is very important. So this is why church is important. It doesn't mean you have to. To be honest with you, you don't have to. But it's wise to do so. It's wise to do so. You are standing before God. You are honoring God. You are conscious of God. And if you can achieve all these things without a church, please go ahead and do so. But I feel if the question is, must Christians marry in church? I want to believe whoever is concerned about this question actually wants to know what kind of marriage is accepted before God. Now, we must understand that the concept of marriage is a contract that should be entered between the families of God. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3, okay, God's instruction was very clear. He said, Do not intermarry with them, do not give your daughters to their sons, or take their daughters for your son. Now, this is God trying to, this is God now speaking to the children of Israel who are God's people, that they should not marry the Gentiles. All right, so even though that was in the Old Testament, this aspect of law or this aspect of God's status is still obtainable for us even in the New Testament because as Christians, we are not supposed to marry those who are unbelievers. So if it's a contract that should be entered between the families of God in the body of Christ, do you think it's ideal for the court that comprises of what the scripture refers to as the unjust to be the one that will officiate a wedding before God? Now if, you say now, if you say because they are considered authority, thereby before God, any marriage joined in court is accepted. I want to draw your mind back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. In that scripture, you could see Paul warning Christians not to take issues, not to take disputes to courts, which comprises of the unjust, to judge issues for them. So, I want to ask you the question. If it is not okay according to scripture for us to take disputes to the unrighteous courts to settle issues between Christian families or Christian brethren, do you now think it is proper for issues as for matters as high as a contract of marriage that has to do covenant between two families that is recognized, which is also one of God's strategy for kingdom expansion? Do you think it will be proper to actually say that a marriage conducted before court will be accepted before God on the grounds that they are considered authority. If Paul would warn against brethren taking disputes before the unrighteous to judge matters for them, matters that can be settled among them, do you not think it would be proper for them to take this issue as marriage that is God's end time strategy, not just only God's end time strategy, God's strategy for kingdom expansion to be officiated before or to be officiated before courts that comprises of the unjust. I mean, I am not actually against court marriage, okay? Court marriage has its own place, okay? So long as we are in a land, we are expected to fulfill the laws of the land. So there is a status going for civil courts, going for civil marriage, that is court marriage, actually gives uh, the couples. There are some laws which you need to fulfill, I mean, as required by the law, you can go ahead and do court marriage. I also will be having one, but coming to say that court marriage that probably will be officiated by the unrighteous or by the unjust will be accepted before God on the grounds that 
they are considered the authority. I think that would not be absolutely correct because if by the scripture, I mean, if by the scripture, Paul was against we taking dispute to cut that comprises of the unrighteous to judge for us, why then do you think it is okay for us to take issue as marriages to the court also to officiate for us? As far as I'm concerned, marriages is a contract that should be entered between the families of God in the body of Christ. If you decide to say, okay, yes, my families are my families are both Christians and they understand the principles governing the, 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 the kingdom of God and they understand the principles governing the kingdom of God. So I want to have a traditional marriage. So long as it is done within the context in the body of Christ, there is no problem with that. So it's okay so long as is officiated within the body of Christ and by the and by the members of the body of Christ, it is fine. But for someone to come and say because the court is a considered authority of the land, so court marriage is also accepted before God. I want to disagree, or I actually disagree, and I want to know what you think concerning this. All right, and this is actually an open discussion. You can actually bring your own scriptural perspective and your own opinion. All right, know what your thoughts are on the comment section. All right, and 